It looks as though you're using an infrared lens or infrared sensor, uh, not lens, yeah. infrared sensor. In Earlier in the film, we're kind of outside. We have this sort of white look all around, and it was um, when Cherry experiences ecstasy for the first time, if I, if yeah. I remember correctly. I want to talk about the use of that um, technique because I don't think we've mentioned that on the show before, and I know it's something that people, have, um, people like to experiment with. Um, Talk to us about your decision to use this kind of infrared look and what that ultimately means. Uh, just to set the scene, you know, um, after Cherry first sees Emily and they have their little conversation out in the school courtyard, he's fallen for her. Um, and um, he doesn't see her again for a little bit, but he uh, runs into these these kids from Shaker Heights, a suburb of Cleveland, who um, offer him ecstasy for his Xanax that he takes as medication. So he makes a trade, and he takes ecstasy, and they take him to this party. And he's having this sort of uh, outer body experience on drugs um, when he runs into Emily at, the par this, at this party. And he's so smitten by her that as he talks to her, you can kind of see that she's sort of grounding him. She's like bringing him back to earth and sort of giving him some warmth and comfort and what otherwise is like, whoa, what's happening to me kind of moment. Yeah. So how did we do that visually? We used a 3D rig. So we had two cameras. Um, ordinarily, they would be offset slightly, but our two cameras were lined up to create the exact same frame. One of them was a normal color camera, and the second one was a camera that was set up for infrared. And you do that in the digital world by... Um, there's a, a filter which ordinarily, in front of the sensor, which cuts out all the infrared light, which is non-visible light. It's light at the end of the spectrum that humans don't see. Um, so it messes up the sensor if you don't have it in. But if you put it in, it will allow the infrared light to come in, and then you can use a uh, an infrared filter, which is a filter which blocks visible light and only lets infrared light in. Um, and this is a tick that technique that was done on film for, you know, for decades, uh, really initially to, um, to do, to examine, like, um, living things, like, and see the chlorophyll in uh, uh, vegetation, and yeah. um, so that was sort of the history of infrared, um, and now we had these two images that were, were the exact same composition and frame, but one was infrared and one was, um, uh, was, was normal color. So what it did was by choosing shot to shot to shot to shot, how much of the infrared you used and how much of the color you used, you know, 80%, uh, 20%, or 50-50, or 80-20, you, um, you could change the tonality of, of the image. So when Cherry first comes to the party, he's totally bonked out and it's full out infrared. And then as he sees her and she sort of grounds him and brings him to earth, you get little by little, uh, the color becomes sort of more normal and if anything, slightly romantic. And, you know, he's just loving talking to her. And then yeah. there's these sort of subtle little... Um, internal moments that are not part of the sync dialogue where you see like a hand on the coat and the rope and, and those have a heavier degree of infrared in them. One of the fun things about shooting the scene was, you know, I really wanted that sort of glow in the flesh tone. And we actually got some infrared lights. Now an infrared light, if I had one right here and I put it on my face, you wouldn't see it. You wouldn't see any light on my face because it's all light that's not visible to the human eye. 
Yeah. So <laughs> it's very interesting when you have a close up of an actor and you're lighting her, and you, um, but you can't see what the light's doing. The only way to see it is to look through the infrared camera, and then you you get a sense. So well, how are you monitoring um, that? Do we, do you, are there like with, monitors that can that you can get that um, feed from? Well, yeah, because the, the 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 output of the camera is infrared. So the the what the camera is putting out to the monitor is what you're going to see. You know, oh, that's cool. But you weren't able to see the blending of the two cameras, your, or were you? Your, no, 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 no. Okay, so you I mean, had so you could do a, rig, you could do a rough overlay with your video assist, but not really. Yeah, yeah, so you were able to either get the regular, you know, just the the regular shot or the infrared shot in your monitoring, but this was a 3D rig, not meant for 3D, but just so that you can have two cameras giving you the same image. That's such a great use of that infrared, um, and it looks so cool. And you, you almost don't even... The giveaway that it's infrared is the very beginning of that scene because it's all kind of that white, but then after yeah. that, it's almost like, well, maybe it wasn't infrared. Maybe this was yeah. all done in post because you start seeing colors incorporated into it. So it was really cool. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion about, you know, how much to use it, how long to use it. You know, I probably would have liked to have used it a little more, but I, I thought it was very effective. I mean, to be perfectly honest, my only disappointment was that when I did the initial test, uh, it was earlier in the year um, and there was more vegetation. And then and I... I, I fought unsuccessfully to shoot the scene very early in the year. Um, but by the time we did, a lot of the vegetation was gone. So that's where you would have really seen the effect a little more. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's, uh, as always, uh, very often, you know, less is more. 